Um, I guess I also now want to sort of deviate into um, that period where things started to turn up for Richmond, and this is uh, probably a bit more happy talking for you guys. But um, when Hardwick took over, my memory is that, and I remember it well because the Eagles won the wooden spoon that year. It was the year Jack Rewalt kicked 10 on us at the MCG. Um, oh, I was at that game. Oh, were you? Yeah, that must have been I wasn't. Good I was homesick and I was so dirty. I was so <laughs> dirty when he came home. And yeah. I bring it in, Jack kicked 10, and everyone was going, Jack Rewalt. And I was. <laughs> To this day, I, it cuts deep. Ouch, that must suck. Yeah, I uh, my memory is it is because in 2010, I, I used to live overseas. I, I lived in um, Abu Dhabi, so a lot. I used to miss a lot of football back then, and even though I was really obsessed with the Eagles, um, the time zone was not ideal, especially because I used to sleep in as a teenager, uh, and then like I'd have to like follow games on 6 PR or whatever. So this particular game, I do remember. Um, waking up at whatever time and I'd miss the game and Richmond was supposed to be worse than us. This was when I, uh, at the time, I think you guys started 0-9 and like, I remember the conversation was like, are they going to win a game? And obviously that was sensationalist media, but that was where Richmond were at. And then the Eagles, um, you guys flogged Richmond and then, uh, sorry, you guys flogged Port and then, um, yeah, I remember just waking up and checking the score and being like, this is bullshit. No way do we lose to Richmond. But y- you guys kind of like emerged as like a half-decent, plucky side almost at the end of Hardwick's first season. At least that's how I remember it. Um, do, how how well do you think Hardwick will stack up in terms of greats at your club, considering how much he's achieved and how much he's turned around this club? Uh, Andres, why don't you answer this one first? <laughs> um, I think he's, he's definitely going to be up there. I like if he serves out his contract, which I can't see him not doing, he'll be our longest serving coach by the time he Is eventually right? leaves the club. Wow. Um, so yeah, I, I can imagine, you know, 30 years from now, he'll be up there with names, names like Tom Hafey and Jack Dyer. Um, just in terms of, of being the person who was finally able to turn the club around. I mean, it, it took him a while, but he, he finally got there in the end and he's, and he's now coached two premierships. Um, at Richmond, so yeah, I think he's definitely going to going to be very favorably remembered by by uh, Richmond supporters, and he's also just such a great personality as well. Um, he's brought, you know, as long along with a lot of football intelligence to the club, he's also brought a lot of like personal development for a lot of the players, and and he's built this like fantastic environment around the club. So it's not just what he's achieved uh, on field for the team; he's been so great for everyone well, off field as well. And you know, guys like like Dustin Martin and, and Marlon Pickett and players who otherwise might have walked away from the game or not got the best potential out of them or all that kind of stuff. He's, he's able to, to connect with those players and create a, an environment in which they can thrive. Um, so I think, yeah, for a lot of that stuff as well, he's been fantastic for our club. And, and that first season, I remember him distinctly, like every press conference, he would say, yes, we lost again, but I don't really care if we win or lose. Like he was more concerned about the style of football we were playing and about getting games into the players. He just, and he just kept saying like the wins will come, the wins will come. Just be patient, everyone. And, um, and they eventually did eventually finally started to turn. Yeah. Do you, do you want to add anything, Zach? Um, no, I don't think so. I think especially like his name in combination, like kind of the Hardwick and Cochin era that dragged Richmond out of the dumps will kind of be like, um, maybe like cemented into folklore or whatever, Richmond folklore at least. But um. so is that the like the fan perception? That it's kind of hard we can coach in terms of, I guess, from a cultural standpoint, have really lifted the club because I, I mean, you had Dusty for a while, but then it seems like he, like he didn't really have his head screwed on. Maybe I'm not too sure. Maybe your perspective is different, but like it was only like before 2017 or 16, he was regarded as a really exciting player with a lot of potential, but it was never really considered one of the best. It's almost like, it was almost like, like he seemed like another Dugowie, like a, a really good sort of impact player, but never was going to, you know, potentially win multiple brown lows. Um, do you, would you sort of say like they were sort of instrumental in turning him around or what's, what's your perspective? Um, well, I know like in the 2017 grand final doco, like they don't believe in never, I love that, actually. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Even the Eagles one as well, they did, I think, even a, a better job of the next year. 
Um, oh, really? I remember the, uh, my favorite bit of the Richmond one is at the end where Hardwick's like, did Dusty cry or something like that? And then it just pans out on his face. I just love like the West Coast one, how they tell the story through that final play. Yeah. Um, I think that's really good storytelling. Um, but there's a quote, I think Hardwick says, no one's had a greater effect on our number four than our number nine. And he talks about um, kind of the impact of Trent on Dusty. And I think Koch has said like in the past that um, – Dusty's like the first person he'd call to babysit his kids and stuff. And uh, that's so bizarre. I think, like, yeah. his, I think, uh, Koch's kids call him like Uncle Usty kind of thing, <laughs> um, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think he's they've on the from the outside looking in, um, I guess Koch has always been there for Dusty and kind of like made him with, uh, I don't know, part of his family or whatever. And, um, that's, just like it giving him a nice stable off field and that's maybe helped him be more consistent on field when he can just go out and play football. For sure. It seems like I, I feel like you almost couldn't contrast two blokes more than Dusty and Koch. And it's, it just seems like in terms of personality, like Koch is extremely intelligent and articulate as well. And you, when Dusty talks, it's sometimes like a little bit hard <laughs> to, to like get all the way to the end of the sentence. It almost seems like that, which is a little bit rude, but obviously he's a gun. Um, so yeah, I guess, yeah, like you were sort of alluding to before, it's almost like Cochin has that intangibility that's kind of added to the squad um, more so than necessarily his disposal average per game. So I guess he, he, as well, he'll be regarded as one of Richmond's greats, like you were sort of saying. Mm. It was incredible in the 2017 final series as well. Um, we, I mean, we can debate until the cows come home whether he should have played in that grand final or not. Oh, yeah, true. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, you guys won by so much, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Throughout that whole final series, he was incredible. At the game against Geelong, he was phenomenal um, and really set the tone against GWS as well. So I think, yeah, a lot of that down to him. Um, Dusty is, is a character as well that I think just doesn't really like the spotlight as much mm. um, from everything you sort of gather, like behind closed doors at the football club, he's, you know, quite chatty and personable and gets on really well with everyone, but has a lot of issues with the media. And I think sure. a lot of that, I think is he feels a bit resentful about how the media have portrayed him in the past as well. Um, you know, like uh, focusing a lot on his dad and, and the whole thing that happened with the, the chopstick. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah, a couple of years back as well. I think he he resents the media a lot from that and and almost goes out of his way to avoid them. Yeah, okay. I want to ask you guys, I know you're Richmond fans, so um, you've obviously got a bit of an inclination on this question, but you're also very, um, looking at your channel as well, you're very non-biased, you're very neutral. I want to ask, in your opinion, who is the best player in the game? 